Hi everyone, I'm Professor Casey, and this is going to be a quick review of value and effect. Let's take a look at these three examples I have here. The first two are fairly simple, and the last one gets into a little bit more advanced. If you look, we have declared float y as a floating point decimal, and we've set y equal to 4.0 divided by 3. Now, if you were to plug 4.0 divided by 3 into your calculator, what would you get? You'd get 1.33. 1.33 repeating, technically. Now, we have this 1.33 repeating being assigned then to y. And y is a floating point number, and 1.33 is a floating point number. So we know that those two things are fine, and we can actually assign 1.33 to our floating point number y. That means that the value of the entire line, right, the value of this whole line is going to be 1.33, and we know that's a float. And the effect of the line is that y becomes 1.33. Okay, so that was a fairly simple one. Let's look at the next one. Example two, I have it x declared, so I know that's an integer, and I have 11 divided by three. Well, if you plug 11 divided by three into your calculator, what do you get? 11 divided by three is 3.6 repeating. However, we know that 3.6 repeating can't actually be plugged into an int. We also have one more problem here. We did 11 divided by three. This number is an integer and this number is an integer. So what does that mean we'll automatically get out due to integer math? An integer. So just this right here actually just becomes three. Anytime we have an integer and an integer, we're going to get an integer out no matter what that actually equals. So this goes away. We have 11 divided by three now, which means we have X equals three, no decimal points or anything. And because X is an integer, we know that three can be stored in X just fine. So that's, that's correct. So here, the value of the entire line is going to be three, and that's an int. And the effect of the line is that X goes to three. Okay, let's do another quick test on that one. I'm gonna erase that quickly and pretend that X is actually a float in this case and just see how that differs. Okay, so now we made X a float and let's see what happens now. We still have X equals 11 divided by three. And we know that 11 divided by three is actually 3.6 repeating. However, because we're still doing integer math here, we know that we have to get an int out. So this again, just goes away and we still get three. So now we have X equals three. However, when we go to assign that three into X, now X is a float. So what happens to that three? That three gets promoted to have a decimal. So it becomes 3.0. That means that the value of the line is going to be 3.0 and the effect is that X is, becomes 3.0. And I haven't forgotten to list my data type here either. So don't forget to do that. Remember 3.0, I list that as a float because I know it got stored into the float even though I have an int from doing it in German. And my effect is that X becomes 3.0. Okay, let's look at the third example. This one's slightly more complicated, so pay attention. Here we have int X and we've set it equal to negative three. We've also said that X plus equals x plus plus. Now that's not only hard to say, it's kind of hard to conceptualize. So let's write that out in a little bit longer format so we really understand what's going on. We know x plus equals is the same thing as saying x equals x plus, whatever comes after it. So we can rewrite this, I'm gonna write it over here, as this, x equals x plus x plus plus. Now, whenever you have a pre or a post decrement, this is something to pay attention to because it means that possibly the value and effect will be different, especially if it's a post increment or decrement. That really means, hey, they're probably going to be different. 
The only other time your value and effect will be different is if you have parentheses in a weird place. Like if you have a equal sign inside of parentheses, then your value and effect might be different. Most of the time though, it's because of a post decrement or increment. I can also right, rewrite this again because I can take out that plus plus there. What that equals is one line, x equals x plus x, and on the next line, x plus plus. And I can actually rewrite x plus plus again, right? We know x plus plus actually stands for x equals x plus one. And this whole thing here is the same as this is the same as this. So now I've written it in a way that I can really understand and I can start to plug things in. So we know in x equals negative three. So let's plug in negative three and see what happens. So I'm just going to erase my equation and then plug in the negative threes where I had x's. So the first equation I had was x equals x plus x. That becomes now x equals negative three plus negative three. So I know this is actually x equals negative six. I also know that because this plus plus, that post increment actually happens afterwards, that this negative six is actually the value of that line. So the value of this is six is negative six, and that's an integer. Okay, but we can't forget about that increment. So we have x equals negative six, but now I also have to change x again. And I know that I have to add one to x, right? X plus plus is x equals x plus one. So negative six plus one is negative five. And that means that the effect of that line is that x goes to negative five at the end of all this. You have to remember that when you're looking at the value, the value only happens in that single line. The effect is what happens to the variable. That variable may have things happen to it after or before the line where you actually do your math, depending on if you have a pre or a post increment or decrement. I hope you found this quick review helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment below. I do check them fairly frequently. Thanks, have a great day.